The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. down on the waterfront looking for the old whaling vessel Grampus. Captain Bernard was in charge, and though I hadn't seen the old captain in more than ten years, I still felt he was a pretty good friend of mine. I could remember him telling Dad and myself some pretty wild tales. I drank it all in, main rig, compass, and anchor. Maybe I never would have seen the old captain and his son Weston if I hadn't been visiting some friends in Boston. I was reading the shipping news one morning, and there it was. Benjamin Bernard. Experienced whalers wanted to man vessel Grampus, sailing July 13th, 1 a.m., 1881. Well, I packed my digs, slung them over my shoulder, took a lungful of salt air, and, well, six hours before sailing time, I was looking for the ship. It was dark as I walked down the waterfront, and I stopped the stranger. Yeah, bud? What do you want? I'm looking for a whaler known as the Grampus, and I think I'm lost. There it is, right in front of you. What's the matter, can't you read? Yeah, it seems that way. Thanks, fella. Uh, do you happen to know if Captain Bernard's on board? Yeah, he's there. You shipping out on her? I'm looking for a job. I'm pretty green, but I'm an old friend of his. So... I'm an old friend of his, too. I was out on his last voyage. I wouldn't ship out again under that yellow curve. I was to stop first. When Dirk Peters says, don't go, don't go. What's the matter? Is the ship haunted or something? Nothing's the matter with the ship. The captain's nuts. Are you sure you're talking about the same man I am? There's only one Captain Bernard, and that's him. He and his son both. Two of a kind. Don't take my word for it. Ask any man that was aboard the Grampus last trip. Ask Sanford Allen, our second mate. Talk to the cook, little Tony Matsay and Sale. Ask him. Captain got playful and cut little Tony's arm off. Look, I'll take you aboard. I've been trying to collect my scratch ever since we landed two weeks ago, and I get word tonight it's ready. Uh, watch out for the loose boards on the gangplank. Yeah, I see what you mean. I'm right behind you. I don't think this ship's sailing tonight, Mr. Peters. Look at that sky. Eh, a little squall don't bother Bernard. Human life's cheap. Climb over the gunnel. It's fastest. All right. Eh, it's a dirty-looking ship. Captain Bernard! Captain Bernard! Well, I guess he's in the cabin aft. Follow me. Uh, that doesn't sound like a little squall, does it, Mr. Peters? Yeah? Oh, incidentally, my name's Gordon Pym. Everybody's got a name. My is like that, I guess. Now we get on the passageway here. Captain Bernard, I... All right, men. Huh? Take Mr. Peters and his friend and put them in iron. What? What's yeah. this? Uh, you dirty swine, you double-crosser. Yeah, the gap, Peters. Take them down to the hold until we sail. Aye, aye, then we'll see what you have to say, Mr. We're well, being Shanghai, Mr. Pym. Shanghai! Four 
in the morning. Been aboard three hours, Mr. Pym. Your friend, the captain, ought to come below any minute with a pep talk. Now that we're too far at sea to swim back. Wait a minute. Allen. Sanford Allen. Is that you in the corner? Yeah. Kind of cozy, ain't it? All of us together here like this, huh? What'd they do, slug you two? Yeah, with the old payroll gag. Come up and get your pay. And they slug you. <laughs> Guess who else is here? Tony? Yeah. Tony, how's it going, Tony? I stick the knife in his belly someday. That's what the Tony Monteo do someday. Stick of the knife. Yeah, you better not stick of the knife or you get swinging the head on the gallows. They call that mutiny, Tony. Oh, uh, meet Mr. Allen and Tony. This is Pim, Gordon Pim. Hi, Hello. Pim. Hello. How long are we out for, do you know, Allen? Sure. Six months. You listen to the Tony, Peters. Listen to Tony. We stick together this time, and you know? all. He cut off my arm. Someday I cut off his head. Ah, shut up. That's a lot of gab. Not... That's life, I guess. The, the captain says for you to go on deck. Well, 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 if it ain't the kid. What you doing aboard ship, Weston? Playing sailor? Mr. Peters, I, I didn't know that... I, I'm sorry that... Sorry? He's sorry. You didn't know that we was going to get shanghai when you come down and tell us the pays rolls made out? You lying, sniveling yellow pig. Well, honestly, ah, I... Forget it. You're in the same boat. Oh, uh, here's a friend of yours, Weston. At least, that's what he says. Friend of mine? I have no friends. No friends at all. I... Watch out, Mr. Monteo. Don't touch me. No, they not touch you. I don't want to get my hands dirty. We don't want no dirt in our food, huh, Tony? I... I can't help what Father does. I never wanted to be a sailor anyway. You know that, Mr. Peters. You know that. I hate the sea. Hate the doggone thing. Ah, oh, leave the kid alone. Come on, Alan, before the captain begins to howl like a bull. Hello, Weston. You don't remember me, do you? I... No. No, I... I don't. The name's Gordon Pym. I used to live next door to you in Nantucket ten years ago. You remember? Gordon. How did you get here? I came aboard looking for a job, and I got one, but not the kind I'm looking for. Oh, I hadn't any idea, Gordon. Gordon, wait till you see Father. Wait. He's so changed. All of us are so changed. You'll see. We walked slowly up to the deck and we lined up. Two lines, ten men. Ten of the toughest, dirtiest looking men I've ever seen. Captain Bernard kept moving his hand back and forth, sort of a nervous habit, and then started to stand muster. He didn't recognize me and I didn't mention our old friendship. As the days went by, he seemed to take a kind of joy in making a fool out of me. But then he didn't treat his own son any better. As for Peters, he hated him and wanted to get something on him. But Peters was smart and stayed out of trouble. He was the only man who wasn't flogged during those first 40 days at sea. One night, we called the ten-man crew to a secret meeting and advised him never to try and talk to the captain. Well, a storm was brewing on the 42nd day of the journey, and I was called into the captain's cabin. I opened the door. You call for me, Captain? Yes, Mr. Pym. I called for you. Shut the door behind you. It is standing there like an idiot. My son tells me that you're giving out free advice these days. Gordon, I didn't. I didn't. I, I swear. Shut up. Neveling swine. Calling you my son makes me ill. Father. <laughs> now, Mr. Pym. I heard you've been advising the men to obey me blindly because you think I'm an idiot mind. Captain Bernard, I said nothing of the kind. Don't lie to me, Mr. Pym. I've known you for many years. Oh, so you do remember. I couldn't very well forget, could I? Despite my idiot mind. I tried to treat you as I treated the other men. You've taken advantage of me. Whispering behind my back. Trying to turn my son against me. Plotting with Mr. Peters. I'd have none of this on board my ship. Gordon, he's making it up. I, I never said it. Are I, you I never said calling it. me a liar, Weston? No. No. You I... see, Mr. Pimp? My son denies it now. But I checked his story through our cook. 
Why don't you admit it, Mr. Pam? I thought I was helping. That's what I told him, Gordon. Shut up. Helping me. Since when have I asked for your help? Answer me, Mr. Pam. Answer me. Well, you didn't, sir, but... But what? What did Mr. Peter say to you about my idiot mind? He said nothing at all, sir. Nothing, is it? No, sir. Tell me the truth. It is the truth, Captain Bernard. Liar! I'll cut your lying tongue out with my own hands. What did Peter say? Nothing, sir. Nothing. Leave him alone, no. Father. He's telling the truth. Don't hurt him. He's my friend. My only friend. The only one I ever had. I leave him alone. Since you love this friend, my son, I'll allow him the pleasure of trying to make a man out of you. Mr. Pim, you'll take this sniveling son of mine and tie him securely to the mainmast. No, Father, no! For the no! Hours. no. Then when he's securely no. tied, you will report to deck for 40 lashings until I get the truth about Peters out of you. Yeah, but it's suicide for a man to be tied to the mainmast in this weather. If anything Captain... happens to him, Mr. Gordon, you'll pay for it with your life. So be sure he's tied securely. <laughs> Those were the captain's orders, and we obeyed him. The wind was screaming through the sails like an insane witch on a broomstick, but Weston and I climbed to the cross trees of the mainmast. It was a tough climb, and I think he knew then it was the end for him, but he was afraid to disobey. When we reached the cross trees, I lashed Weston's arms and legs firmly, hoping he could survive the storm. By the time he was made fast, I patted his hair and tried to soothe that poor lost boy. The last I remember of him was his tear-streaked face and the look in his eye. I waved goodbye to him and climbed slowly and carefully below to report for 40 lashes. Captain Bernard, Mr. Pym reporting, sir. Take off your shirt. Yes, sir. Place your hands behind the whipping post and hang on securely, Mr. Pym. And think carefully. Try to remember the words Mr. Peters said. About my idiot mind. Yes, sir. The mainmast, Captain Bernard. It's the mainmast. A jump for the mainmast! It's cracking! Captain, come back! Weston! Weston, my son! You fool! If you watched overboard, save him! Weston! Weston! Watched overboard! My son! Yes, your son, Captain Bernard, and you killed him! You dare say that to me! You murderer! Yes, I warned you of this, but you wouldn't listen. I'll say it. I'll say you're insane. Beat us! Beat us! Throw this man in hand! Are you talking to me, Captain Bernard? Throw this man in! Take your hand! Help me, Peters! This man isn't going to captain the ship any longer. It's only Mr. Pym! Do you realize that? Do you want to swing on the gallantry, Mr. Peters? I can't hear you, Captain Bernard. Ain't that a shame? I just can't hear you at all. Just truss your arms up. You'll swing with his feet. Let me go. Let me go. You'll swing with it. Ah, oh, shut up. You'll swing. Here. I'll tie this gag around your mouth. That'll keep you quiet. The crew's coming topside. The storm's let up for a little while and the course is set. Did I know, Gordon? I thought we'd tell them when they got here. Well, we got to work fast. This calm ain't going to last and we won't be able to steer no course at all with the main must gone. Hey, what's this special meeting about them? Oh, look, Alan. Look at the captain. Peter. Yeah, Did you? Yes, Mr. Allen. It's a mutiny. Are you with me? I copy the head off. No. Shut up, Tony. I ain't getting mixed up in no mutiny. Is this your idea, Gordon? Yeah, that's my idea, all of it. If any man swings around here, it'll be me, so listen to me. You should have asked us, Gordon. We don't like getting dragged into something like this. Now listen to me, man. Nobody will swing for this if you use your heads. 
Nobody has to know this is mutiny. Sure, he's all right. We'll kill the captain. Tony Manseo cut his head off. And then we say he chose to die. Now, no, Tony. We can make this look like a shipwreck. The captain gets put in a lifeboat and set adrift. No, no, Tony, cut his head off. Shut up, Tony. Go on, Jordan. And we all know the captain's nuts. In two or three days alone on the ocean, he'll be a babbling idiot. Idiots don't talk sense even if they're found. And even if he is found, he'll look like a shipwreck victim. What about the boat? We're going to scuttle her. Get off on lifeboats when we're near land. Within two days, we'll be ten miles off Cape True. We can row to safety, and it'll be up to you men to keep quiet. Now, are you with me, men? No. We're yeah, with you. We're with you. All right. All right, let's go. And work fast, you monkeys, because we're in for a whale of a blow tonight. I was so smart, smarter than anybody. You could see it then. I had the whole thing planned perfectly from beginning to end. We lowered the captain in a lifeboat, gave him some biscuits, a compass, and a jug of water. But I didn't figure on the storm that was to come. But the storm broke soon after in all its mad, screaming fury. We couldn't control the Grampus. She was like a wounded animal, and I thought for a minute she'd sink by herself that night. There were eight men left then, being the kid and the captain was gone. We had to lash ourselves to the deck to keep from being swept overboard. But during the night, four of the men were lost. It seemed to me that the ocean was fighting back the mutiny. Water poured into the ship. The entire belly of the ship was waterlogged, and only the top deck was riding above the ocean. There were three lifeboats on the Grampus before the storm, but we lost them during the night. And then, toward morning, Alan screamed out, You blasted fool, Gordon! We can't scuttle this ship even if we want to now! What do you mean, we can't scuttle it? It didn't sink, did it, Mr. Peters? Ah, shut up. The hold of this boat is filled with empty oil casks, isn't it, Mr. Peters? Yes, Alan. I forgot about that. Well, what's the difference? Difference? You land lover, them empty oil casks is full of air. They'll act like a balloon and keep this rotten whaler from sinking. Is that true, Mr. Peters? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, we can set the ship on fire. What good will that do? We're burn alive. Don't even say no, set the ship on fire. There's no life about it. Yes, Trey. Ah, shut up, all of you. Let me think. Just going to have to set tight and wait. Wait for what, Peters? Wait and pray we get saved. Maybe a ship will pass by. You'll hang, Peters, if we're saved. You and Gordon will hang. I had nothing to do with the mutiny. Me and Tony's free and clear. Ain't we, Tony? Yeah. Yeah, nothing to do with the non-mutiny. Just wait. Wait. Wait and pray. We did wait and pray. Waited for 13 horrible days without food or water. Thirteen days. And then one morning, Alan began to complain as usual. So thirsty. So thirsty. How many of us are left, Gordon? It's not light yet, Peters. I don't know. How do you feel, Gordon? I'm not sure. Take it easy, kid. The sun will come up shortly. Alan. Yeah. Where's little Tony? Tony! He isn't around. I heard him scream last night for water. I guess he jumped overboard. Listen to me, you two. We can't last much longer and you know it. We've been drifting like this for 13 days. 13 days without any water. We can't keep it up, I tell you. We can't keep it up. Water! Water in God's name, I need water! Yeah, Alan. No, Peters, I know how he feels. All you can do is scream for it. Even the salt water looks good to me. What's the matter with you, Gordon? You going off your nut? Listen to me, both of you. There's just three of us left. None of us can last very long floating around on a... on a derelict ship. None of us. But there's a chance. There's always a chance we can be saved. If we can last... What are you getting at, Alan? One of us will have to die so the... so the others can live. 
One of us must. No. No, I don't know. If we all die here first. Maybe you won't, but I will. You were the ringleader, Gordon. You started this thing. You'd hang if we got to land, so would you, Peters. But I'd be free. I got a knife. Put that knife down. Alan's right, Gordon. If any of us is going to live, one of us has got to die. Yeah. Oh, Peters, no. It's better to die Shut than... Up, Gordon. I know what I'm saying. Alan's right. It's two against one. Yeah, two against one. We're going to choose for the privilege. There are three pieces of wood. Take them, Gordon. Hold them in your hand. The man who gets the shortest stick is the victim. Is that level with you, Alan? Sure. All right. Put your knife right here in the middle. Okay. There it is. Okay. Choose, Alan. This one. It's short. Uh, it's my turn now. There. Yours is the long one. Who is the shortest miter, Gordon? Let's say. Gordon? Yeah. It's you, Alan. No. No. No, I won't. I'm the one that should live. I'm innocent. Give me that knife. Let go of it, Alan. Oh! You <laughs> double crook. Take that, Peters. And that. You. Uh, 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 now I get the knife. And no, Peters, uh, you. you oh. Uh, Dead, Peters? Yeah. I just... I... What's the matter with you? You all right? I'll... I'll be all right. I'll... Always double-cross. Alan wounded you badly, Peters. Oh. I'll get some salt water and wash the blood off you. That'll keep the wound clean. It's too deep, Gordon. Look. Look ahead. Look, Gordon. I see the outline of land ahead. Land! Uh, it's just a mirage, Peters. You think it's land? No. Look. Look straight ahead. You're right. Land. Land ahead. We'll be saved, Peters. Peters. Peters was dead. Peters and Alan lay side by side. I climbed over the gunwale of that ship and started for land. I don't know how I ever made it. I couldn't swim four miles in good condition, yet I swam four miles after 13 days of no food or water. I climbed out of the water, wet and tired, and fell exhausted on the beach. I don't remember what happened after that. I was in a native village of some sort, I knew, and some native women had taken me in and cared for me until I was well. They thought I'd been shipwrecked. They would have kept on thinking it, too, if it hadn't been for the first day I was well enough to walk around. I stopped in at the settlement's only inn to figure things out. And as I opened the door... What do you mean there's a derelict ship out there, eh? I mean what I say. All the grampus. This old loon keeps saying he was once the captain of that ship. Oh, loon. I'm crazy, eh? You men think I'm crazy. But I'll prove I'm sane. There was no shipwreck. It was mutiny. Mutiny. And my son was killed. He did it. Yes, he did it. Mutiny. And he did it. There he is. Right there. Standing at the door. Look at him. Don't let him get away. Don't let me get away! Hey, mister! You mustn't get away! Mister! Come over here. Talking to me? Yeah. Come on over here to this table, stranger. This old loon claims he knows you. Yes, I know you. Don't I? Then answer me. You were hired on board the Grampus and led a mutiny against me and you'll swing for it. I was picked up three days after you put me in that rowboat. I've stayed alive for one reason and one reason only. 
to watch your body swing from the gallows. Tell these men the truth. Speak up, man. Speak up. Are you a Gordon Pym? I demand an answer. Are you a Gordon Pym? Well, mister, are you? It's your word against his. Tell the truth. Are you a Gordon Pym? Frankly, I don't know who I am. I guess I'm just something washed up out of the sea. Yeah, I'm just somebody washed up out of the sea. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have heard narrative of Arthur Gordon Pitt. Bellkeeper, hold the bell.